In 2015, 193 countries, including Ghana, convened in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to establish the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. The SDGs were set up by the United Nations and are to be achieved by 2030. They are a part of the 2030 Agenda, often known as Agenda 2030, which is a UN GO resolution. The SDGs were created as part of the post-2015 development agenda to replace the Millennium Development Goals, which came to an end in 2015. By placing sustainability at their core, the SDGs highlight how the environmental, social and economic facets of sustainable development are interconnected. In January 2016, the SDGs went into force. Its goals are to promote economic growth, provide social inclusion, and safeguard the environment. The UN offers support to governments, the commercial sector, academia, research and CSOs or NGOs, since the SDGs promote collaboration. If you're still watching this video, it means you're interested in the content, please take a second to hit the like button as it enable more people view this video. Now back to the video. We were the first sub-Saharan African nation to meet the aim of having poverty, as included in Goal 1 of the Millennium Development Goals. And we were the first nation in Africa to eradicate trachoma, according to Ghana's president, Nana Akufo-Addo. Ghana wants to coordinate government development priorities with CSOs and the business sector in order to jointly accomplish the SDGs. People, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnerships are stated to be the five overarching themes of the Agenda 2030, often known as the five Ps, which cut across the 17 SDGs. With much ado, we're going to be talking about these five pounds Ghana is working to attain by 2030 and see for ourselves if Ghana is truly changing for the better. Five, people. From 13.6% in 2013 to 11.3% in 2021, the percentage of Ghanaians living below the international poverty level decreased. Over the same time span, the tendency is visible in both urban and rural locations. The overall poverty rate rose in two of the 10 regions Upper East and Northern, from 31% to 40% and 36% to 39.3%, respectively. According to national standards, the percentage of Ghanaians who are poor decreased from 24.2% in 2013 to 23.4% in 2021. In households that are considered to be a danger of poverty, there are more men than women. The prevalence of poverty is higher among the rural population, regardless of ecological zone. The share of poor households in the rural savanna zone, which was estimated at 64% in 2021 compared to 55% in 2013, is partly to blame for the rise in rural poverty. Following an overall drop from 2005, Regional disaggregation reveals that poverty grew between 2013 and 2021 in the Volta of Northern, Upper West, and Upper East regions. Ghana has made some strides toward enhancing the nutritional health of kids, especially those under the age of five. The Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey found that stunting among kids aged five and under reduced from 30% in 1998 to 23% in 2011. From 19% in 2014 to 18% in 2021, this further decreased. In Ghana, the estimated prevalence of stunted children would result in an annual stunting rate drop of 0.9 percentage points, from 30% in 1998 to 11% in 2030. Ghana has also made progress in reducing the nation's overall malnutrition rate. There is a gradual drop in the prevalence of overweight children. This dropped from 7.1% in 2003 to 4.7% in 2011, and then further to 1% in 2021. Additionally, the prevalence of underweight decreased from 22.1% in 2003 to 14.3% in 2011. To enable year-round farming, particularly in the country's north, one community and one dam, to build at least one industrial firm in each district, one district, one factory, and subsidy programs on retail prices of seeds and fertilizers. The home vegetable garden component of the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative is supported by the Ghana Zero Hunger Strategic Review as an intervention to increase food and nutrition security. The goal of the Ghanaian government's universal health coverage or UHC policy is to increase all socioeconomic groups' access to and the caliber of their healthcare. 
in order to build new health infrastructure and expand community-based health planning services compounds. Investments have been made in high-quality, dependable, sustainable, and resilient health infrastructure. In order to fulfill the UHC policy's objective, efforts must be made to close equity gaps in access to healthcare, ensure sustainable healthcare finance models that protect the poor, and enhance governance, management, and efficiency in the provision of health services, improve maternity, child, and adolescent healthcare, as well as the prevention and control of non-communicable diseases and neglected tropical illnesses, were some of the additional goals. Four, prosperity. The percentage of the population using improved drinking water services, such as piped water into a home, yard, or plot, bottled water and sachet water that is available when needed, increased from 37.3% in 2013 to 44.3% in 2021. This information comes from surveys conducted by Ghana Living Standard. Despite having more access than rural residents, rural areas have seen a greater percentage of access to better water throughout the years 2013 to 2021. Public awareness and education initiatives, as well as the management of the 10.2-kilometer buffer zone established in the White Volta Basin to preserve, conserve, and sustain fresh water supplies, are interventions to effectively manage, protect, and conserve water resources. With 81.1% of the populace linked to the national grid in 2021, the availability of energy has continued to increase. Greater Accra has the highest access rate of 93.7%, while Upper East Region has the lowest of 47.7%. Ghana is actively working to make sure that by 2030 the remaining 19% of the population, who live in isolated and frequently inaccessible places, are taken care of. Off-grid and mini-grid solutions have been used to address the electrical needs of a bigger section of this population. As a metric of reliance on clean fuels, cooking using liquefied petroleum gas or LPG in electricity climbed from 22.3% in 2013 to 26.7% in 2021, following a trend that has been growing since 2007. In both urban and rural areas, LPG and power use has increased. From roughly 3 MW peak in 2013 to 43 MW peak in 2017, power from renewable energy installations has risen. Compared to thermal and hydropower output, solar PV generation accounts for 0.3% of total generation in 2022. A renewable energy master plan is being implemented to direct the creation and promotion of renewable energy sources for socioeconomic development and the mitigation of climate change consequences, with the primary goal of providing the legislative and regulatory framework required for creating and expanding the nation's renewable energy subsector. The Renewable Energy Act of 2011 is now being implemented. Potential independent power producers with plans to create a total of about 6,600 and 98 megawatts of electricity from diverse renewable sources have been granted provisional wholesale electricity supply licenses. With the approval to install solar panels for 1,006 out of 2,823 houses, the National Rooftop Solar Photovoltaic Program, which was established in 2016, targeted residential facilities in metropolitan areas. In order to focus on providing energy to rural homes in off-grid regions by 2030 and beyond, the program's second phase underwent a trial in 2021. 200 rural homes in 16 off-grid areas piloted solar PV systems with a 500 watts peak capacity. Over the past 10 years, real GDP per capita has generally increased. GDP per capita's annual growth rate rose from 1.6% in 2007 to 4.4% in 2022. The year with the highest GDP per capita growth was 2011 at 11.3%, and the year with the lowest growth was 2015 at 0.1%. Between 2015 and 2018, there was a significant increase in per capita income, which has been partially ascribed to robust economic growth and careful financial management. The implementation of flagship programs and the oil and gas sector's outstanding performance have contributed to the increase in economic growth. With the longest sustained period of single-digit inflation, lowering interest rates, and a relatively stable currency, the Bank of Ghana has been successful in implementing monetary policy. 
The Bank of Ghana has also taken actions to improve the stability and health of the banking industry. The government launched a number of programs to upgrade the infrastructure at the various airports as part of the long-term vision to transform Ghana into an aviation hub within the West African sub-region, including the expansion and renovation of Kotoka International Airport and upgrading of Kumasi and Tamal airports to international status. When accelerated job growth and economic transformation are being driven by expansion in the manufacturing subsector, industry typically plays a key role. Since 2013, the manufacturing sector's GDP contribution has remained constant. Between 2013 and 2016, manufacturing's GDP share averaged 11.4%, while between 2017 and 2021, it remained constant at 10.5%. The government's medium-term program is to develop competitive industries in all regions of the nation in order to position the manufacturing sector to function as a catalyst for increased job creation and economic growth. Government is putting forth leading industrial development programs including One District, One Factory, Strategic Anchor Industrial Development Initiatives, and revitalization of viable but financially distressed companies to achieve this goal. To ensure sustainable production and consumption, the government is prioritizing the following initiatives. Expansion of cleaner production centers, conversion of EPA environmental guidelines into standards, promotion of recycling, Ghana appliance energy efficiency standards and labeling program, promotion of rooftop solar energy panels, establishment of electronic waste recycling facility, and planting for food and jobs program. Three, planet. The nation has developed the nationally determined contribution in accordance with its international duty under the Climate Change Agreement. To aid in the operationalization of the National Climate Change Policy's mitigation goals, Ghana created a National Climate Change Policy and a Low Carbon Development Strategy. The National Environment Policy, Energy Policy, National Policy on Public-Private Partnership, National Transport Policy, and National Forest and Wildlife Policy are only a few examples of national policies and guidelines that have been made climate compliant. Ghana acknowledges the significance of putting adaptation and mitigation measures for climate change into action at all levels. As a result, climate change assessment is applied to the development plans of NDAs and local governments. At the national and subnational levels, disaster risk reduction and climate change have been included into development planning. Concerns about climate change have also been integrated into the rules for creating the annual budget. Ghana has created a climate change strategy and action plan that aims to improve sector-specific climate resilience and adaptation. Ghana has reported its progress on measures to improve climate adaptation and mitigation in its biennial update reports, national communication, and nationally decided contributions to UNFAC. The nation now has the following strategic documents to address climate change-related issues. National Climate Change Policy, National Climate Change Master Plan, Investment and Implementation Plan for Nationally Determined Contributions, National Climate Change Adaptation Strategy, National Read Plus Strategy of 2016, National Forestry Plantation Strategy of 2016 to 2040, and 2018 to 2021 Medium-Term Development Policy Framework. The Ghanaian government's intended nationally determined contribution specifies emission reduction measures to be implemented in the energy, transportation, agriculture, forestry, and land use, waste management, and industry sectors between 2020 and 2030. The creation of unified reporting for both the Paris Agreement and SDG 13 is one of the new issues relating to climate change in Ghana. In the corporate sector, there are also significant opportunities arising, and the government is thinking about how to encourage a stronger participation of the private sector in climate change responses. The government is also examining the possibility of creating a national finance facility or system that may address the demands of many themes, such as gender or renewable energy, without having an overabundance of resources and procedures. From the start of the 2019 to 2020 academic year, all elementary schools began teaching about climate change. Junior and senior high schools will follow in subsequent years. In order to prepare teachers across the nation for the start of the academic year, the Environmental Protection Agency is supposed to provide them with teaching and learning materials. 
In addition, four public colleges have started offering courses on climate change. The goal of this initiative is to increase students' awareness, assist in changing children's and adults' environmental behaviors, and so aid in the effort to mitigate the effects of climate change on the nation. The percentage of forest cover increased slightly from roughly 38.7% in 2012 to 41% in 2021. Less than 20% of forest reserve areas have sufficient levels of integrity, according to an assessment of the forest. The Ghana Forest Plantation Strategy 2017 to 2040 is being implemented by the Forestry Commission in order to preserve the forest cover and achieve a sustainable supply of commodities and services from planted forests for benefits to the economy, society, and environment. Two, peace. From 2.17 per 100,000 people in 2012 to 1.9 per 100,000 people in 2021, the homicide rate has decreased. The rate did, however, go up in the following years, rising by 0.04 in 2016 and 0.1 in 2017. Even while the rates are rising, they are still lower than the pre-SDG era levels, enhancing police-public relations, improving recruitment procedures, upholding professionalism, improving ethical standards and rules of engagement, retooling the police, improving the conditions of service, capacity building, enhancing witness protection, using technology are some of the interventions used over time to address homicide and crimes in general. According to the facts that are currently available, psychological abuse continues to be the most common type of violence experienced by people, and women are more likely than males to become victims. In 2019, 9.3% of women were reported to have experienced psychological violence, compared to 7.9% of men. The prevalence of physical and sexual assault against women was 6.1% and 2.5%, respectively. This occurred more than twice as often in men than in women. However, among both the male and female population, economic violence was more prevalent than social violence. According to estimates, 12.8% of females experienced economic violence, compared to 11.6% who experienced social violence. In order to ensure neighborhood safety, the government is launching a number of initiatives, such as community policing and the installation of street lighting. Additionally, the Youth Employment Agency's Community Safety and Security Module has educated 1,140 community protection personnel to ensure community safety. Generally speaking, from 31.6% in 2013 to 29.9% in 2021, fewer people reported paying bribes to public authorities. The drop was seen in both urban and heterosexual populations. However, over the same time period, the proportion of people reporting paying bribes rose in rural areas from 25.1% to 26.1%. 1. Partnerships. As a percentage of GDP, total government revenues have decreased from 22.9% in 2015 to 9.2% in 2022. Between 2017 and 2022, there has been a significant reduction of roughly 13.6 percentage points which has been partially attributed to the rebasing of national accounts. The ratio of domestic and tax revenue to GDP decreased between 2017 and 2022. Broadening the tax base, implementing the tax identification number, operationalizing the presumptive tax system, implementing the excise tax stamps, operationalizing the paperless port system, and reviewing the tax exemption regime are just a few of the measures the government is putting into place to boost domestic revenues. Between 2012 and 2018, net FDI, or foreign direct investment inflows as a percentage of the national budget, fluctuated. Ghana received a total of $3.3 billion in FDI in 2014, up from $2.9 billion in 2012. In 2015, they fell to $2.8 billion, but by 2017, they had risen to $4.1 billion. The improvement in 2017 is largely linked to the country's political stability and increased business community confidence. Ghana was the top beneficiary of FDI in West Africa in 2018 despite net FDI inflows as a share of national budget, declining from $4.1 billion in 2017 to $3.3 billion in 2018. The evolution of the economy and society is significantly facilitated by Information and Communication Technology, or ICT. It is a crucial tool for boosting productivity and effectiveness in both the public and private sectors, since it offers effective information storage and quick access. 
The government's most recent initiatives to advance ICT have centered on accelerating the creation and deployment of ICT infrastructure and enhancing the institutional and regulatory framework for controlling the ICT industry. Both in urban and rural areas, the percentage of people utilizing the internet has steadily climbed, reaching an average of 98% in 2017. In 2006, 2013 and 2021, more men than women used the internet, despite the fact that both genders' usage was generally rising. In 2021, the percentage of people who used the internet exhibited a consistent trend across all areas. However, there were some variances in 2013, with the western area having the greatest percentage of internet usage with 84.8%. Upper East Region reported the least, followed by Upper West Region with 73.1%. Partnerships is our fifth and last fact out the future of Ghana in 2030, particularly pertaining to the SDGs guidelines. Thanks for watching this video till the end. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We love welcoming new subscribers into our growing online community here on Think Rich Africa. See you in the next video.